episode 111, Repairing and Maintenance Tips to Prolong the Life of Your Stuff. Welcome to the Frugal Friends Podcast, where you'll learn to save money, money, embrace simplicity, and live a richer life. Here are your hosts, Jen and Jill. Welcome to the Frugal Friends Podcast. My name is Jen. My name is Jill. And today we are going over a listener request for a lot of repair tips for things around the house, etc. <laughs> yes. Got to got to take care of stuff. It's part of it's part of growing up, you know? Yeah, you got to you got to take care of your things, make them last long. Yeah, you save 100% of the money you don't spend. So <laughs> if you can repair something at home with things you already have, you save a lot of money. A lot so, of money, girl. So smart. Yes. Uh, but first, let's get that money and uh, talk about our sponsors. Yes. So the first one comes from your ad here. <laughs> You've all Love seen this one. Love You've this all one. seen those billboards <laughs> <laughs> where it's not actually a billboard. It's the we we want a billboard to be here. That's what's happening right now. <laughs> As if it wasn't hard enough to get our own sponsors. Now the world has fallen apart and there are no budgets for podcasts. No ad budgets for podcasts. Well, while we look for our next sponsor, here's how you can financially support us without actually giving us your money. It's like magic. You can sign up for Rakuten. It's actually really awesome. We've been talking about Rakuten before we even had a referral link. But when you sign up for Rakuten, Spend $25 at any online store that they offer cash back at. So you can sign up at frugalfriendspodcast.com slash Rakuten and download the Chrome extension. And then you'll see every time Rakuten offers cash back at a store. So when you spend $25 through Rakuten, you earn $10 cash money. So it doesn't have to be all at one time. doesn't have to be just at one store. Rakuten tracks your spending. And once you've spent $25, they put $10 into your account. Uh, So that's one way that you can help us without spending any of your own money beyond what you've already budgeted for. And when you do that, that also helps to financially support us. Yes, you save 100% of the money that you don't spend, but some of it still goes to us. 100% of that goes to us. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> some of the money what I, <laughs> so, we don't get all of the money you get the things you bought and then 100% we get of that back. donation uh doesn't come out of your budget it comes out of Rakuten's so please help us <laughs> certainly if you do just want to give us your money I mean feel For free sure. yeah uh so our next sponsor is June Carter Cash five-time Grammy award-winning singer songwriter actress dancer, comedian, author. June Carter Cash is the is the woman we all want to be. And June is June Carter Cash month here on the Frugal Friends podcast because A, her name is June, duh, and B, her last name is Cash, duh. So take time this month to listen to a few of our favorite JCC songs, including It Ain't Me, Babe, Jackson, and a good man. Mm. And emulate your own inner June this month as you kick butt and take names with your cash. What Power month just here. happened? I think you've been in isolation <laughs> for too long. I mean, I love it. It makes sense. You also wrote duh in your show notes. Like when you said duh, that was actually written. Like the plan yeah. to say that. I read scripts, Jill. <laughs> Yeah, follow the Uh, script. But I always, I love June Carter Cash. I've always loved her. She's a fantastic woman. And and we should all be our own version of June Carter Cash because Johnny Cash gets too much of the publicity. Like, but the real power behind that empire is June. And so you be your June this month. And get that cash. Get that cash. Mm. Well done. Well, yes. let's let's not waste any more time there. <laughs> so sorry, so, <laughs> but I'm not sorry. Uh, we're going to talk Thanks, about June. 
repairing things today. Um, yeah. We have had a few other episodes covering maintenance, uh, but it's been a long time since we've done something like this. Mm-hmm. So um, in episode 23, we talked about home maintenance and uh, building an essential toolbox that has like all the things that you're going to need for home maintenance, for general home maintenance. So that's episode 23. And then episode 10, we talk about car maintenance. So a few car things that you could do on your own. But mm-hmm. here it is, episode 111. We haven't done anything since. So that's I mean, we're going to go a little deeper in it to it today. Yeah. So first article comes from Martha Stewart. Jen was so excited to actually use a Martha Stewart article. Martha Stewart's another woman I admire. I, I'm i so into the powerhouse women, like with yeah. empires. <laughs> You're building your own over there. I see you. I just love them. Thank I see you. you with your books on your bookshelf. Thank you. So she gives in this article 12 things that you could repair instead of replace. Something that I will say is Martha, good old Martha, is coming from the perspective that all of your things are very nice to begin with. She got they fine are taste. Expensive, high quality, real products yeah. that you should repair instead of replace. So keep that in mind. We're not going to go through all 12 of them. We're going to go through our favorites and give mm-hmm. you our take on it. Like always, we've been here for 111 episodes. You know what to expect. Uh, but also it's worth noting that if it's not real, we might go about this in different ways. Yeah. It's not and, high quality. And this is really great if you find something of good quality that somebody is trashing or getting rid of, or yes. maybe at a thrift store. Uh, this could be a way when, if you familiarize yourself with these uh, different points and these different products, you could get that for a low cost bring it back to life and have something of really great quality that stays with you for a really long time. Oh, such a good point, Jen. Man, you are, you, you are an empire. <laughs> it's the only reason yourself. I have nice stuff. The only reason I have nice stuff is because yeah. I got it for free or yeah. super cheap. That That is true. A lot of times people with money who afford these things brand new, they get a little stain on them and just donate it. And then mm-hmm. that's when we swoop in, us frugal friends swoop in. We're like, mm-hmm. mm, that stain's not a problem. Yeah. We or know you can find it, it on eBay. A lot of times I'll find things on eBay or Facebook Marketplace that just need a little love. Yeah. Yeah. So. So I love that how this article starts off just by talking about a fix it first mentality, which I do think is the foundation for what we're describing that. And you've heard us say this before. Can you fix it? Can you shop within your home? Do you have what you need before going out and buying? And then once you do go buy, can you buy used instead of new? And so Mm -hmm. kind of these these first barriers before we actually replace something. So if if we begin to adopt a fix it first mentality, fix it first mentality, anytime we see something that we might want to throw away or we might want to give away to think, well, is this of use to me? Would I still want to use it if it worked? Okay, how do I fix it? Mm-hmm. Fix it first. Yes, definitely. I really loved um, some of the things that I learned from this article. Mm-hmm. The first one was about handbags. So mm-hmm. I know. Um, I've been in some groups where they talk about buying less and buying better quality and uh, and handbags, leather handbags um, or like briefcases, book bags, stuff like that. That is probably one of the biggest things, like a, a leather laptop bag. Mm-hmm. You could use that for years and years and years and then and pass that down to like someone in your family or someone you love. Mm-hmm. Um leather just stay it just gets better with time if you take care of it as long as you're conditioning it yeah it yeah can, it can dry and crack but mm-hmm. if you can take care of it it can last forever yeah and so but if you have a good quality bag um, with worn or frayed straps um, you can you can replace hardware on your on your uh, bags mm-hmm. uh, you can get stains out of leather uh, with you can Buff them out with white vinegar. Vinegar does so it does. much. It's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, if the leather's untreated, you can use a natural shoe polish. Um, and then you can 
Martha says, or whoever wrote this, um, you can boost your tote's functionality by adding a grommet and a mm. carabiner for keys. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So like <laughs> it's not? versatile. A really yeah. good bag uh, is versatile. So mm-hmm. I'm always on the lookout for like good bags on like eBay and stuff. Yeah. I've even with backpacks or some totes or different things, if they've got emblems on them or designs on them that I don't like, sometimes I'll like embroider or put fabric in shapes that I do like over top of it. I remember I did that with a backpack once. It had butterflies and I don't know, I'm probably the only one in the world on popular opinion. I don't really care for butterflies. <laughs> I don't so, think you're the only one in the world. <laughs> I cut, well, also cuz my this is a side tangent, but my brother put a dead butterfly in my bed when I was little and it just like flaked apart like um like you know how moths just they flake oh, apart. No. And then and then I saw the butterfly for what it was, which is just a really big insect and from that point on I'm like they're they're pretty I get that but ultimately they are an insect and I will enjoy that's, from afar that's why you didn't want to go through the butterfly garden at Epcot uh-huh. you're like the butterfly garden. I was like no oh my word they're gonna crawl all over me oh my gosh yeah it all comes together so it, it had a butterfly patch on it and I put a bird patch on it <laughs> anyhow put a bird on it put a bird on it but just put a bird on it yeah so uh moving it's... on speaking of mending uh sweaters your favorite sweater so certainly with knits you can learn how to darn holes or Uh, fix snagged threads or frayed parts or buttonholes. I mean, this article just lists sweaters. I would argue that you can do that with any type of clothing. I remember, Jen, when we were staying with you guys, Travis picked up a sweater from the thrift store when he was Mm -hmm. on a work trip and he bought it. It was a really nice sweater, but it probably got donated because it had some holes in it and the pocket on the front was kind of pulling away from the rest of the sweater. And you guys happened to have thread that matched and we sewed it up and good as new. It is. So yeah. definitely don't let that be a reason to throw away clothes that you like, that you wear often uh, with a little sewing tutorial. You can be good as new. Mm hmm. Yeah, I think we're still all waiting for that sewing tutorial, Jill. <laughs> I am. Actually, I I do have some mending to do. I will. I'll try and record a video for you, Jen. Okay. Um, and then the last one I liked on this one is uh, scuffed uh, furniture. Mm. So I learned a new technique from here uh, that when you have water rings on a piece of furniture, you can put salt over the ring and then use some heat to draw out the water, um, like a, like a blow dryer. Yeah. And then that can remove the water ring. And I know, so most of these, I think you're seeing a pattern is that we're not repairing our own stuff. We're repairing other things (laughs) that we got for cheap. Um, (laughs) so we got, we have this, uh, we have a table and we also have a, uh, coffee table uh with water rings and the one our dining table for some reason it has a a ring that's like singed into it um but this coffee table has some water damage and so i'm about to go put some salt on it and and see what happens and just maybe put it out in the sun because florida is heat take a before and after picture okay definitely yeah because travis already um he sanded down the coffee table and uh, you can still see some of the water damage. So I'm going to see yeah. what happens and uh, see how if it has to be like newer water damage or if it can be older because Old, I don't know yeah. the age of the uh, water damage. So water I will stain. I will practice it and I will report back yeah, by the time this episode airs. Please yes. do. Yeah. So, but this is even easier if you already own something with uh, water damage, you can really quickly put the salt on it and, and put some heat on it. Nice. So, yeah, I really liked that because um, you can find some great furniture uh, that's been mistreated. Yeah. Get a good deal on it. Lastly, on this list that I liked is rugs and carpet. So there's a lot that you can 
clean and repair when it comes to rugs and carpet, I will say. She makes a crazy suggestion, and I guess it depends on how expensive your rug is and how far you're going. But yeah. one of the things she says is that you can patch a rug with a similar piece of other rugs and dye the fabric to match the original pattern. And I don't know if I would go that far, honestly. I mean, you know also what? because In I my spend mind. like $50 on my rugs. In my mind, there's a square of like carpet in my rug that I that I would try and paint to match the design yes. on my rug. And so it would be the square that's like a little bit higher than the yes. rest of the pill. And it's <laughs> it's been clearly painted with like, I don't know, water paints or oil based paints. And that's and it's not even good. It's like just free handed. Yeah. Um, that's probably a repair gone wrong. Yeah, that's Don't what even I'm bother. seeing. Don't, um, yeah. <laughs> but a couple of my suggestions, you know, because this frugal friend does not spend thousands on rugs. Mm-mm. I get them from Ross. Let's be real. But some some tricks that I've done. Honestly, I've moved a stained part of the rug under the couch. Yep. <laughs> Just rotate that sucker. Rotate also, that sucker. <laughs> I'm going to put that also, on a shirt. Rotate that sucker. Yeah. It applies to many things. <laughs> also, renting a carpet cleaner or borrowing, if you've got mm-hmm. a friend who has a carpet cleaner and you can do some, uh, utilize some water with your cleaning, not just vacuuming, man, that can do wonders. All kinds of carpet cleaners out there, certainly. Um, and, but, and depending on what kind of rug it is, like if it's one of those knitted ones do you know what I'm talking about like the spiral you could sew back together oh like a woven yes thank you um also and this this might be trial and error but certain rugs you could especially if it's an area rug take it outside and power wash it particularly on high wind um, sunny days the thing about washing rugs fully is that oftentimes they can have a really hard time drying out so I wouldn't recommend doing this with like a super thick rug Um, but your thinner area rugs you could certainly just Take it outside in the driveway, power wash it, and and if you can, kind of get it up, you know, on a chair, or on a clothesline, on a on a sunny, windy day. That has also done wonders for me. Yeah, and that's a cool way. When we are allowed to start having parties again, you could have a pressure washing party, and you, everyone could go in on a pressure washer, <gasps> um, and yes. and bring your rugs and uh, wash them and dry them together. Oh my word! There's so much you can power wash. Yeah, your outdoor furniture, your rugs, your who knows? That's so yeah. fun. A power washing is addictive. I, I love it. <laughs> I know. I know. It's fun. Yeah. So I, if you're looking for excuses to have people over, once we're allowed to do that again, um, we should we should make a list of like frugal parties yeah, pressure power, washing party power washing party is number uh, one on that list lamp rewiring party <laughs> yes. rug painting honestly party. i think a lot of people a lot of people would probably be into that right now even if it's just video tutorials we're all at home trying to figure out like what needs fixing next yeah <laughs> learning these new skills could be great yes i i agree speaking uh, of learning new skills next next up Uh, We have a list of 23 things you didn't know you could fix yourself from thisoldhouse.com. And I will be honest, this is a very dry article. There's no room for our interpretation. But (laughs) after looking at a lot of uh, articles with things that you can DIY, this one I felt was the most comprehensive. The things that you can fix, how Mm -hmm. to do it, uh, what the if you need a piece for it, how much the piece costs and uh, what it's called and even on some what it looks like. So you can determine if the price is right for you, if the skill yeah. level is right for you. And so we'll have the link to the thisoldhouse.com um, article and definitely click on it, bookmark it and just look at it whenever you have at your leisure. It's certainly one to hold on to. It's interesting. I was going through my grandmother's sewing stuff yesterday. Speaking of uh, 
editing your minimalist life and all of that yes. on previous episodes. <laughs> but there she had kept so many newspaper clippings of how to's. And it hit me that's the equivalent of us earmarking websites that we want to refer back to when mm -hmm. we need them. So yeah, this is our generation's version of, oh, when I need this, when I need to do that repair, here's a spot that I want to go to and reference. So yeah, mm -hmm. that's essentially what we're saying. Keep this news newspaper clipping someplace. Yeah. It's got um, fixes for like an uneven shower stream, leaky faucet, puddling toilet, mm -hmm. Uh, toilet bowl scratches, stuff in the kitchen like uh, your vent hood, cracked glass cooktop, mm -hmm. drippy dishwasher. I like how it says I know. drippy. Yeah, all the things. Yeah, very yeah. <laughs> crunched, crimped, yeah. drippy. They, like all these yeah. words that are like, oh yeah, this feels like how I would describe it. So this is probably the article for me. Yes. Um, there's definitely lots of plumbing stuff on here, which I know mm -hmm. can be really daunting for a lot of folks, but I think it's helpful to see this on here and just to learn how stuff works. I think that's part of this trying to fix things yourself, DIYing some simple fixes helps us to learn how things are put together, how they work, which then can grow our confidence level to be able to handle some of these fixes as we keep going. Like mm -hmm. we we wouldn't normally know where the water line to the fridge is and how that connects to the ice maker unless we take some time to do that. Um, so I think yeah, it's all worthwhile. I will say a lot of this stuff in some ways comes down to cleaning where we think, oh, this thing is broken. It needs to be replaced really, especially when it comes to plumbing stuff, calcium buildup, um, can really cause low or slow um, flow out of faucets and shower heads and that kind of a thing. And so even just going around and unscrewing that and plopping that in vinegar can can help. So they've got some of that listed on here. But thinking about, can I fix this? Is this maybe just something that needs to be cleaned really well before I go to the next step of trying to actually hire somebody? Yeah. And about half of the repairs on here are um, like $15 or less. And the other ones range from like 25 to 75. And the price per repair really does correlate with how uh, complicated it is. So um, if you're looking on here and you see like a $15 part, then have confidence in yourself and try to do it yourself because that's probably not as complicated as a like removing the gas coils from a grill and replacing that mm -hmm. even though that doesn't actually sound super hard uh yeah but it yeah so look at the price and then try it out for yourself because it's mm -hmm. not that much money lost to if you mess up because that's another thing you have to be okay with maybe not succeeding mm -hmm. and and quote unquote wasting um you know 15 dollars or something because if you do succeed, then you've not only saved yourself money by repairing what you have, but you've also built confidence in mm -hmm. doing the next thing. Yeah. Um, but if you quote unquote fail, then you haven't lost money. You've just gained a little more knowledge and what you can do, what you can't do. Uh, so stuff like that. So right. don't, you still yeah, don't understand be afraid. more about how that thing yeah. works. It's which definitely can not help wasted. you in the future. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, one of the things on here, um, let me let me find it. Um, vacuums. The, so this stalled vacuum brush number thirteen. So we actually found a vacuum by a dumpster when Travis and I were dating. <laughs> Sounds so right. like right five right? <laughs> yeah <laughs> um, five years ago, and this is before I knew what to expect with him. And I was like, okay, whatever you, you know, you do, you take the vacuum. <laughs> and, uh, he, all he had to do was clean it out. And, uh, here it says that if you have a stalled vacuum brush, that it's just like three bucks to repair. Um, but he didn't even need to repair anything. He just cleaned it out. And we had this hundred dollar vacuum that we got for free that has worked ever since we literally just got a new vacuum. Um, and it was 
kind of out of necessity because we've been using this one for five years that we found by a dumpster. But <laughs> I really wanted a um, a cordless stick back to be easier to maneuver around mm-hmm. high chair and, and stuff. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, we have been using that for uh, five years and it was free. Yeah, it's amazing. And I do think we know this at the root of everything that if I were willing to do some problem solving and dig into this a bit more, it might be, I might be able to fix this. But I do Mm -hmm. think some of it just comes down to our willingness and our desire to problem solve and whether or not we just want to be lazy and buy new. Frugality is not going to let you be lazy. Um, Yeah. Turn that vacuum cleaner upside down, grab a screwdriver and see if you can figure this thing out yourself. Mm -hmm. I mean, right. And it's not just with vacuum cleaners, but using that as an example, I think just being willing with take a small tool and start figuring it out. And then when it gets beyond you, YouTube it. And then when it gets beyond that, all right, maybe call for some help, but let's try and fix it first, you guys. Yeah. Give yourself an hour. An hour away from the internet is not going to kill you in trying to repair something because we also realize your money is worth, or sorry, your time is worth money. Mm -hmm. So it shouldn't take away from time. Uh, You should be working or or doing something else, um, like having valuable time with your family. It shouldn't take away from that. But if you are thinking about scrolling on some Instagram, maybe you take those apps off your phone for a day or two and and try out repairing something that you need to repair. Mm-hmm. So you just have to balance. Um, your life isn't going to be all about fixing stuff. It's sometimes it's worth getting something new. But I think too quickly, we resort to that first. And mm-hmm. it's just mm-hmm. get creative, get get resourceful. Yeah. Yeah. Or we, we want to spend the money. (laughs) I'm going to beat this thing up so I can get a new one. (laughs) Yes. That happens too sometimes. And I'll say with my new, uh, Dyson cordless vac, I did a, uh, a survey on Instagram of what cordless vacs people were using and unanimously everyone said Dyson. And obviously Dyson's not cheap, but I told Travis, I was like, if you don't get me a Dyson, I'm going to, I'm going to hit you with the stick that you whatever it is. So <laughs> just a stick or like, I'm, or like the old the, vacuum, whatever cordless. Yeah. Cordless stick vacuum you do get me with. I'm going to hit you over the head. With it. <laughs> so, uh, and so he got me one, but he got me one in traditional Travis fashion Oh my gosh. where he went on eBay. We love eBay. And he got one that was open box. So it was half the price that it would have been new. But the vacuum was brand new and he had a coupon for like 10, 15 percent off. So he got additional money. eBay does coupons? I guess. Yeah. Right. It also does cash back on Rakuten. So, yeah. So he got this. um, I think it's normally three hundred dollars and he got it for one hundred and thirty. Yeah. Amazing. I know. I know. So well done. Thank you. I just had to like praise him for a second because he got me exactly what he wanted, what I wanted. Uh, um, and he didn't get hit over the head. Which yeah, was, like, he great avoided for both being us. abused by you. So <laughs> I'm sorry, yes. Travis. We'll, we'll yeah. be we'll be back down in Florida soon and help I didn't protect say you that from for the record. <laughs> Damn. Okay. He'll attest to that. I did not say that. But yeah. So Good. if you do need to buy something, you can still get creative in how you buy it. Yeah. There's no excuse. Well, the article also has a what's not a DIY fix list. So you're welcome to check it out. But there are definitely things that are too dangerous for the average person to try to attempt. I remember we talked about this um, on one of the previous episodes that you had mentioned, like replacing a garage door is one of those. And yeah, on this one, microwave ovens that don't heat up. It's it's pretty dangerous to replace the magnetron tube okay just the fact that it's called magnetron you should probably know we're we're not going to be able to do that um pressure washers with a leaky flow cracks on a furnace heat exchanger 
squeaky bearings on a front load washer, refrigerators that don't cool. Yeah, those compressors and all those things don't do it. If it's got the word compressor, magnetron, triplex pump, carbon monoxide, we probably want to stay away. Yeah. So <laughs> those are the so those are the things you shouldn't tr- attempt to do yourself. Um, but everything else, just look up a YouTube video. Unless you're a professional, I'm sure we've got professionals yes. listening to us, and they're they're probably dying right now. Like, that's yeah, not no, a big I'm deal. sure they're not dying. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm to sure me they're it like is. agreeing with us. <laughs> yeah. But if you have any um, things that you have repaired yourself and have made you feel really accomplished, please go to our Frugal Friends community Mm. on Facebook and post those. Uh, You can post a picture of your thing or maybe a video tutorial that you used to fix something. Um, That would be really helpful for encouraging people to get in on the DIY repair train, uh, knowing that there's other people that have done it and succeeded. So that would be really helpful. Yeah. Does help to motivate us. Right. Speaking of motivation. Duh. (laughs) It's time for the Bill of the Week. That's right. It's time for the best minute of your entire week. Maybe a baby was born and his name is William. Maybe you paid off your mortgage. Maybe your car died, and you're happy to not have to pay that bill anymore. Duck bills, Buffalo bills, Bill Clinton. This is the Bill of the Week. Hi, guys. My name is Sydney. Um, my fiancé is currently deployed, and I just moved us into our first apartment. Um, this is my first time paying all the apartment bills by myself. And... I was able to do it while drinking a glass of wine on my couch. So it's been a pretty great bill of the week. I hope everybody's okay. And I look forward to your podcast so much every week when it comes out. It's really helped me kind of start meeting my goals so we can buy a house in a few years when he gets out of the military. Thanks again. And I can't wait to hear you guys next week. Bye. Oh my gosh, that's awesome! Amazing. With a glass of wine, you are yes. my girl. <laughs> From the couch, yes. that's how it's done. <laughs> oh, that is living it's, the life. It sounds like it was a little daunting to do that on your own, and especially to be alone right now. But um, you are out. Sorry, him. I'm. I'm just like you are June Carter cashing it. Yes. That's, that's all I could think of. She's yes. Jen can't get away from that one. Yes. No. Good job, June Carter, cashing it. Yes. <laughs> Being Girl. your own woman, yes. paying your bills from your couch. Mm. That's yes. what's up. You don't need Glad a man, to hear but you're you love a well. good one. You love a good man, <laughs> but you don't need one. <laughs> Hope you guys can buy that house in a couple of years. Way to get at your goals. If you have a bill that you want to submit to us, whether you're sitting on your couch drinking a glass of wine or out and about, if you're allowed, uh, (laughs) visit us at frugalfriendspodcast.com slash bill. Leave us a bill. We love to hear it. All of your different bills. It's so fun. Yes. We love cheering you on. So please let us cheer you on more. Yes. And that brings us to the lightning, lightning round. round. Mm. So we went over some things that you can fix to prolong, uh, but we will now proceed to share with you the top two things that we each take care of so that they will last longer and how we take care of them. Nice. Yeah, I'll start. So we have outdoor furniture and we bought the kind that the fabric around the cushions can come off so we can wash it. So we bring in the cushions each night. I know some people have storage bins on their deck or bringing them inside. It is a pain, but 
It makes them last so much longer. And then you don't walk out and sit on wet, soggy cushions, and then you can't even enjoy it anyway because the cushions are wet and soggy. Mm -hmm. So we bring in the cushions each night, and and then I wash the covers yearly. So it has stayed in really nice condition. Mm, Yes. What about you? Um, So this one, you wouldn't like, I don't know if this is like allowed, but... Uh, I'm thinking of our grass. It's our podcast. Oh, good, good. Um, so <laughs> thinking of our grass, our grass. <laughs> we so Travis and I installed this grass with our own four hands, and we really do make an effort to maintain it and take care of it, yeah. so that we can enjoy it for longer. And we made an effort to buy the type of grass that was right for the season we were planting it um, and then learn how to maintain it. And then there have been a few times where what we've done um, to help it have has actually tried to kill it. (laughs) Travis got a few (laughs) fertilizers that kind of did not do well with the grass, um, but really quickly uh, tried to rectify it. And so that is one of that's probably the biggest thing right now. Uh, that we are trying to maintain because we want to have a like a good grassy area for Kai to play in because he's about to learn to walk. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that is kind of it's a big deal. It's not cheap either. Uh, So I can vouch for your guys's care of your grass. My goodness. Literally, anytime it was sunny and Travis wasn't working when we were parked there, he was out doing something to the grass. He mm-hmm. wasn't shirking on other responsibilities. He's still a great dad and husband. He just <laughs> also is a really good groundskeeper, like yeah. watering, looking at it, cutting it, watering it again, fertilizing He's a good grass it, dad. looking at it, talking about it, mm-hmm. watering it. Yes. Yeah. Um, also with my clothing. So can you tell that clothing is like, you wouldn't know it by the way that I dress. But you do. I've seen you line dry everything. Yes. Um, Part of that is because our combo all in one washer dryer sometimes doesn't fully dry, which I'm okay with. Sometimes it does. Sometimes it doesn't. That's another thing we got to figure out. That's besides the point. We line dry. (laughs) most of our clothes and that does make them last longer. It helps me not have to iron because let's be real. I hardly own an iron and I'm not going to waste my time doing that. Mm -hmm. Uh, And then also I sew, I I do repairs on my clothing um, before throwing it out. I mean, certainly there's clothing that is just at the absolute last leg and I'm tired of it. So I will pass it on either in rag form or to the thrift store or something. Um, but usually I try to make my clothes last as long as possible that way. Mm -hmm. Anything else for you, Jen? Cleaning my kitchen appliances. We didn't do that when I was growing up. And so I didn't realize the, um, effect it had on how the appliances functioned. I thought that we were just broke so that we had like things that didn't work right. But that could have been easily remedied to an extent um, by cleaning the refrigerator, cleaning the dishwasher, stuff like that, Um, cleaning the microwave even. So that is another thing that I do to prolong the life of my things. Um, Mm. Yeah, I just bought a, I got this uh, little dishwasher cleaner thing. And I don't know, it it did clean, but I don't know if it made a, any difference other than me just hand cleaning the dishwasher. But I wanted to dry yeah. it out yeah. uh, to see. I it, It's so true. I think cleaning is a way, it doesn't seem like it on the outset as a way to make something last longer, but you start to realize if things get more and more gunked up, the less likely they are for you to even want to use them or for them Mm -hmm. to really even be able to serve their main function. So just dusting and cleaning and polishing can really help. I realized one, one bonus one for me is that anytime I do a painting project or I refurbish something, like usually referring to furniture, I will do a clear coat 
over top of it, a clear coat of paint, and that helps the finish last longer and it makes it more resistant to chipping. So I've seen that really do well over the years. And I also realized that with furniture that is maybe a little bit tired or I don't, I'm not liking as much, if I'm able to think of a way to update it using paint or hardware or taking some pieces off of it, whatever it is, it that has really helped to make me um, renewed, a, a renewed happiness <laughs> in it and, and a contentment <laughs> in it and just to kind of like refresh it a bit. So that's also another thing, not necessarily repairing, but definitely um, caring for it or breathing life back into it, which helps it to last longer, even for like my contentment level of that thing. Awesome. Yeah. Well, I hope that uh, you guys found this episode on repairing helpful. Uh, definitely head to our show notes or our website and uh, bookmark that 23 things you can fix yourself because that will come in handy eventually. And uh, mm-hmm. thank you so much for for listening and uh, being being part of our group. Yeah. Uh, and also another way to thank you is by sharing a review. We, we're we so grateful for all of your kind reviews that you all have left us over the years. We can say that now oh. uh, on iTunes and Stitcher. So we want to read this one. It comes from HCMD. It's titled Fun, Frugal, Fabulous. They know we like alliteration. Mm, yes. Happens to be five stars and says super <laughs> fun, super frugal, super fabulous exclamation mark thank you so much for that review we love being fun frugal and fabulous <laughs> mm-mm. so you can also continue to keep leaving us reviews on itunes or stitcher send a screenshot of that review to frugal friends podcast at gmail.com and tag us on social media our latest episode in both ways will enter you to win a 10 dollars amazon gift card mm-hmm. bye Frugal Friends is produced, edited, and mixed by Eric Suriano.